to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Exodus chapter 33. We'll find somewhere to pray. Exodus 33 and verse 13. We are following a pattern now. Moses is about to encounter the glory of God in a unique way. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your way. Many people know the scripture that Moses said, show me your glory. But that was not the first thing he asked for. The first thing Moses asked was, show me your way. Why? That I may know thee. Show me your ways. He made his ways known to Moses, but he did not just come. Moses requested and said, I know that your ways are connected to your glory. If I do not know your ways and I do not know you, when Jesus came, here was his manifesto. He says, I am the way. There is Jesus the way. Until you find the way, you cannot find the truth. And until you find the truth, you cannot find the life. The protocol is jesus the way i am the pattern that leads you into that reality when you find that reality then you can come into experience i am the way i am the way it says show me thy way that i may know you that i may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is thy people uh -huh. let's read on it says and he said my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. 15. And he said unto him, If your presence goes not with me, carry us not from hence. I can preach all night here. A man who can leave ministry to preserve the presence of God. A man who is saying, Look, let them say I failed in my assignment, but if I have your presence, I am satisfied. As for me, I believe in advancement, but I rather be purported to be in delay provided your presence is with me look at this this is already an instruction because many people would give up the presence of god a thousand times to continue ministry for wherein shall it be known that i and thy people have found grace in your sight is it not that in that thou goest with us so shall we be separated i and thy people that means what will be the difference if i go without your presence i'm just going to be an ordinary preacher wasting my time with jealousy and envy fighting people not because i am bad but because i'm frustrated at my lack of results every time you do not have results the effect is you will be angry at those having the results and you will look for an excuse not because you hate them you have to manage the pain in your heart from your own frustration the major reason why pastors fight is not because they are bad. Everybody who is fighting anything likes that thing he's fighting. But the truth is that it is not through their hands. The scribes and the Pharisees did not hate miracles. They hated the fact that it did not happen through them. And they said, Madam, don't come on Sunday. And Jesus said, hypocrites, if your donkey falls inside the well on Sunday, you know that your donkey has a monetary value. You will enter that well and bring it out. Nicodemus exposed all of them. He came to Jesus by night. He said, I'm not ready to be a hypocrite. Rabbi, we know. Forget all the nonsense we are saying in the day. We know that you are a man sent from God. It says, for no man can do these things except God be with him. That means all our talk in the day is just we already know the truth. Hmm. 
Are we following? Let's read on. No, not, not John 3 now, please. Go back to Exodus. Exodus, our text, 33. Exodus 33. We're reading now from verse, uh, I think, 16. All right? Let's go to 17 now. 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Next verse. And he said, I beseech you, show me your glory. You don't ask for the glory first. You ask for the ways, the patterns. When the patterns are delivered, you can now say, show me your glory. And then he allowed his goodness to pass by him. And he said, Moses, you can't see the entirety of my glory and leave. But here's what will happen. I will keep you at the cleft of the rock. And I will close your eyes so that when I pass, I will give you an opportunity to see a dimension of my glory. Everybody say divine patterns. Listen, if you learn what I share with you today, in a matter of days and some of you weeks, your life, your Christian experience and your ministry will be a wonder first to you believe me and then to everyone around you people will look at you and say when did Saul also become one of the prophets what happened to you and you will say I came for this Peniel conference you know that Peniel was an encounter isn't it Jacob before Jacob's encounter it was only God of Abraham and God of Isaac we didn't know God of Jacob a man used his life to introduce us to that dimension of God's glory. It was so powerful, God recommended him as the pattern to follow if you want encounters. You see, the way scripture works is that God captures his patterns and personifies them in men. So that every time you are searching for the pattern and you cannot find it, he makes the journey easy for you by referring you to an individual so if you want to know what it means to walk in the blessings of the lord and you don't understand this whole greek and hebrew that paul is talking he refers you according to isaiah 51 from verse 2 to abraham and sarah he says look unto abraham verse 2 and unto sarah that bore you understudy his life how i called him alone how I blessed him and how I increased him. He is my portrait of what it means to be blessed in the kingdom. When you want to study the prayer ministry and your prayer ministry is going down, prevailing prayer that can subdue territories, the Bible refers you to a strange prophet called Elijah. It says Elijah was a man of like passions, but there was a way he prayed earnestly. For three and a half years, he locked the heavens and opened it again. Are we together? When you want to study favor, for instance, you have not seen favor in your life. The Bible personifies favor in a woman called Esther. And he says to study her. How a village woman from Shushan rose to become king alongside Ahasuerus over 127 provinces. Killed her man and yet never held a knife in her hand favor when you want to study deliverance he refers you to israel in egypt how that for 430 years a people were in captivity are we together now and then in one night they came out triumphantly with gold with all kinds of blessings the things that are written are four times the Bible says they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope so Moses asked for the ways of God and the ways of God ushered him to the glory of God apostle I'm a great priest I love the Lord but I keep having it in my dreams that there is more God wants to do with me. That dream will remain a dream in the realm of the spirit until the Holy Ghost helps you to capture the pattern that brings that grace. 
you want church growth you are trusting god for numerical increase it does not just happen by handing handbills i assure you and i guarantee you human beings are more intelligent than that there's nothing wrong in giving handbills but it's more than handbills find out what jesus did that made a crowd to climb the mountain you know how hard it is to climb a mountain yet they climb and they sat down there for three hours members come and after 30 minutes they are yawning and angry and they go out and after service they sit behind the boots to gossip for three hours so it was not that they were in a hurry they had time can i tell you this every church represented here and every man of god you can have your auditoriums filled with hungry people who are coming to be saved hungry people who are coming to be changed there are enough unbelievers there are enough non-transformed believers to fill every cathedral without any sense of competition whatsoever but you must know what it takes for there is a pattern apostle i want church growth the pattern is and if i be lifted up from the earth the moment you promote yourself and it's all about you he only draws men when he's lifted up i want to prosper i'm tired of failure and hardship it's not by hustling and hitting left and right the bible clearly tells you except the lord built a house it says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the watchmen can watch but in vain he says it is vain to wake up early to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he says but he can give his beloved sleep and so he now begins to teach you there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty he's showing you the ways of god a diligent hand shall be made fat he's showing you he now begins to show you the excellency of wisdom in producing your result you find out that you are a leader and it looks like your leadership is failing politically ministerially he tells you the deficiency is not just the presence of demons you need wisdom for it says wisdom is the principal thing is it in your bible it says get wisdom and in all your getting get understanding it says exalt her and she shall promote you she will put an ornament a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her speaking about wisdom it says doth not wisdom cry by me kings reign and princes decree justice he says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness when you want to know what it means to be successful at a territorial level you don't go to a herbalist you go to job job is the man that personifies what it means to be lifted by god job chapter 29 you read the first four verses job gave us the secret are we seeing divine patterns now it says job 29 job not john job 29 and verse 1 moreover job continued his parables i'm just showing you some patterns before we just iron things out and pray all that i were in the months past in the days when god preserved me uh-huh it says when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light i walked through darkness keep that scripture please verse 3 everybody look at it carefully this was the secret behind job's expression there were two kinds of light that made job rise number one was the light that shined on his head the second was the light that shined in his feet the light that shined in his head is for revelation and illumination the one that shined in his feet was for direction you don't just need direction alone you need illumination illumination Elihu lamented and he said in chapter 32 I think and verse 8 or so of Job he says there is a spirit in man and the breath ruach the Greek word pneuma the breath the spirit the essence makes men it can give them understanding the fortitude to comprehend hmm. hallelujah are we together yes apostle my life is slow in ministry and in destiny i'm not making progress and yet you read your bible you see that speed is a possibility is that true that the hand of the lord came upon elijah 
and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel. So there is, a, there is speed. But what is the secret to speed? It's in the Bible. Have you not heard? Have you not known? The everlasting God, the Lord, the maker, the creator of the ends of the earth. He is not weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Then it tells you that even the young men will be weary. The youth will faint. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord. So the secret of speed is to wait upon the Lord. He says, you will renew your strength. You will mount up with wings as the eagles. You will run and not be tired. You will walk and not faint. Apostle, I desire the power of God in my life. We're talking about the glory of the latter house. I desire the wine, the oil for the next season. Let me tell you how it works. The wedding in Cana was the first miracle of Jesus. And the Bible says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples and he manifested forth his glory. What was the wedding about? It was about a feast. One, two, it was about a wine that finished. It was limited. That was the old wine. The wine finished. Number three, it was about sensitivity. A few people within that feast said something is wrong with the formation of this feast. Jesus is in the feast, but he's not the epicenter of the feast. There are other rulers, and they dumped Jesus somewhere in the assembly. And they came to Jesus, and Jesus said, no, 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 no. You people go and do your thing, since I am not the epicenter of what you are doing. And they went to Mary. And Mary said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do. Let me show you how the wine for the end time is formed. It first starts with water. You want to encounter genuine anointing? It will not start with seeking anointing. It will start with the word of God. It first started with water. The water cleanses. The water purifies. The water gives you understanding. While you are engaging the water, it will suddenly start turning to wine. And by the time you get to the rulers, the place of visibility, you, you started with the word. But by the time you arrive at your place of influence, you are holding wine, the finest of them. And the rulers tasted of that wine and said, why did you hide this? I didn't hide it. It only took time to make it. Are we together? I pray that God is speaking to us this morning. Now, let me give us one key to manifesting the glory. Just one and then we'll pray and we'll take the other one or the other two in the evening. The first key to manifesting the glory of God is the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting you want to see the glory of God manifest in your life you will have to engage please pay attention the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting John chapter 12 from verse 23 Jesus please look up Jesus revealed something very powerful here. And here's what he says. And Jesus answered them saying, The hour has come or is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. So he's talking about glory. The very next verse, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it does die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And remember John 15 and verse 8. Herein is our Father glorified when you bear much fruit. Herein is our Father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. When ye bear much fruit. So God is glorified when we bear much fruit. And that much fruit happens at the instance of death. Please listen to me. There is a relationship between death and glory. This may not be a very comfortable sermon for many ministers, but there is a relationship. 
if it is the glory of God you want to host, superior dimensions of his power and his grace, grace over territories and nations, it will happen at the instance of death. What is death? Death is a principle that separates you from the impulses of this life. A dead man is not dead. A dead man is only separated. Do we agree with that? When you pinch a dead man, he has lost the ability to be connected with the impulses that come with this realm. Even though he's alive, but he's alive in another realm. No longer this realm. Set fire on a dead man. He has no reaction to it. Slap a dead man. Talk about him. Slander a dead man. It makes nothing. The moment you are still connected to the impulses of this life that produce jealousy and produce these things is because you are still alive. Glory cannot be revealed. Let me tell you this. Only dead vessels can carry God. The weight of God is heavy. You can't carry him when you are alive. You have to be dead to self. Dead to the flesh. And the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting. Many believers only know prayer as a platform for receiving things. The primary assignment of prayer is not for receiving. Receiving is a later part of it. The primary assignment of prayer is for transformation. Are we together? Until we die to the impulses of this life that come with a plethora of pride. Please give us Luke chapter 9 from verse 28. Watch this. Luke chapter 9. We're about to pray. And it came to pass, Jesus now, we're reading from verse 28. It came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. So Jesus went to pray. What happened to Jesus when he prayed? Let's read together in concert. One to read. And as he prayed, uh -huh, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. This is the first assignment of prayer. Prayer is not just to receive things. Prayer is to change you. Prayer is the system that evolves you into the version of you that can host the glory of God. This version of you may not be able to carry the miracle working power, even though potentially that in Christ you have access to these realities, but walking in the manifestation of it will require you to be formed. There is a version of you. 30. Same scripture. Let's hurry up. And behold, there talked with him two men, Moses and Elijah, as a result of the manifestation. The Bible says, who appeared in that glory and spake of his decease, which should accomplish at Jerusalem. 32. But Peter and they that were with him, my goodness, my God, they were with him. And yet they were unconnected to it. But thank God for the compassion of Jesus. When they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood by him. 33. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is a good thing for us to be here. Let us make tabernacles. You see how they were thinking? They were thinking from a realm of carnality because they were still connected. Let us make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and that cloud overshadowed them and they feared as they entered into the cloud. They feared as they entered into the cloud. Uh -huh. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Look at what happened. Oh, that's, that's all right. That Jesus went to pray and he was more focused on his transformation. Many times when we go to pray, we spend hours, God, give me this. I've told you this. God, people are mocking me. And God says, the reason why you are feeling the mockery is because you are still alive. Let prayer transform you and you will find out that you will not even be bothered again. 
many of the impulses that distract us in ministry are proof that we are still connected to the mundane things in this realm you didn't appreciate me and that becomes an enmity of 10 years you didn't appreciate my sermon petty and silly and sometimes even fleshly and carnal things can i tell you this when you take out time to pray for the purpose of transformation something begins to happen to you the hallmark of transformation is not knowledge is love the love of god begins to grow in you and you can look at people and still love even when they are unlovable because something has happened to you by the spirit everyone say prayer prayer with fasting that's true many people pray but they do not fast have you have you noticed that when you are not in an organized and conscious fast you can stay a whole day and not eat and you may not even be hungry sometimes even water but you declare a fast and you wake up by 8 and by 11 anything you see around you sweet orange even food for children there is something that is pushing you there i tell you the reason why because there is power when people consecrate themselves when you give god dedicated attention in fasting and prayer intimacy is built when you invest time ask any husband and any wife imagine a husband and a wife that sees themselves only once a year just comes eat her food and is on his way going that marriage will almost be on the way to crashing are we blessed yes. to spend time in prayer lord i love you and you are praying praying out every flesh take away those tendencies lord don't allow me rise in the presence of people before i disgrace myself search my heart oh god this is not condemnation this is god purifying you he says but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver of clay and of of wood he says some vessels are unto honor some vessels are not are unto dishonor if a man will purge himself the presence of god when you set yourself to pray you are rolling left right and center in his presence you are not going there as a man of god you are saying lord i am here i'm here for you here there are great responsibilities there are sermons that must come out of my encounter lord if you do not help me and show me mercy i do not have what to say and whilst you are there suddenly that glory you are immersed in that glory like like you know how you marinate meat women you just pour oil or you pour something and just marinate it and keep it there for a long time the goal is that everything penetrates through is that true to the very fabric of that meat hmm. do you know there is power in staying with god servants of the living god let's obtain grace to practice this ministry can be an idol it can distract you especially for some of us that god has helped to be a bit busy travel from here to here mog ministry expansion your relationship keeps dying while doors keep opening I know many, 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 many people. Let me tell you this. I confess to you, and I know that many of us are like that. I live an extremely busy schedule. And sometimes I almost want to cry because I, I miss those times when I had the luxury of time. Where I can lock myself. Now I cannot lock myself. I respond to 800 to 1,000 text messages every day. And yet, there are some of you here, I, when I was being graciously ushered, I saw some of you looking at me, and I could sense admiration. Oh God, let me be like that. Let me give you an advice. Let me give you an honest advice. Let me give you, this is, this is a, a minister's conference. I won't say this in the evening, but let me tell you this. 
if you do not love him and his presence more than ministry you will not last not this end time are we together i love him more You've heard me say it, I will cancel ministry a thousand times. Some of us, the only time we pray is Saturday night. Quickly rounding up, Father, thank you because on Sunday I'm going to stand as you are brushing the notes. No. You see, let me tell you something with God. When you see marriage, am I wasting your time? We're about to pray. When you see a married couple who are truly in love and they love themselves, there is no fake in it. The thing about love is when love gets strong, love begins to invent names that gives expression. Is that true? Every husband here has names that he calls his wife. When things go bad, he starts calling her my wife or the name her father gave her or all kinds of things. There are indices that tell you there's trouble. So, Imagine with me for a moment a man who is not used to calling his woman darling or honey and all of a sudden he appears before people and just for the sake of his ego he now starts saying honey and she looks at him and says when did this one start? I'm not used to you calling me in the secret place. Why stand here and say lion of the tribe of Judah rose of Sharon, my Jesus and we can feel the strangeness in your communication. This is not your language of the secret place. The place of relevance is the place of the altar. The place of relevance is the place of death. Any man you see that you truly admire the investment of the spirit upon his or her life, I can tell you, it came at the instance of death death to the flesh death to the impact the, the influences but when you die you get to a realm called Galatians 2 20 I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ that lives in me he says, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. Then you will see the power of God. Then you will see the grace of God. It takes more than an offering you know, to contact superior levels of God's glory. You can package a seed and we live in a generation that is obsessed with quick, quick impartation. Once people see a man of God who is anointed, people just kneel down with seeds. I'm not saying that is wrong. There is a principle there. Many times the men of God just pray so you stand up and go. Even them, they know nothing came on you. They know that if they don't pray, you will not go. Death. You get to a point where it is no longer your agenda. I'm not just interested in making a name for myself. I'm interested in Jesus being glorified. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. Prayer breaks away all those pride that came from our backgrounds. That pride, that passion to prove a point. They must know I'm a man of God. And he says, no, you cannot carry the glory this way. You will never know the tendencies within you until you go to that threshing floor in the spirit and allow prayer to be the, the system that tunes you. You never know pride can be there. You never know lust can be there. You never know all these things are there. Until God vets you, you cannot hold host his glory in experience. Do you know what it means to have access and influence to 30 billionaires and yet you have to maintain integrity? 
and say i will never compromise to manipulate any one of them do you know what it means to carry the prophetic grace god is opening your eyes you are seeing everybody's bank account and what is there it is this lack of unfinished training that is producing the casualties we see in ministry people graduate themselves in the school of the spirit they don't wait until they are dealt with can i tell you this in the school of the spirit there are no graduates graduates are rebels we remain students in the school of the spirit so whilst we learn and whilst we lead others we are also students we're going to pray you must pray and say lord search my heart and try my thoughts before i disgrace and disappoint my own destiny some of you sincerely you desire power but i know the reason why the reason is because people have looked down on you and you are tired of mockery so you are hoping that god will give you power so that you quickly go back to your region and say where is the one who laughed at me yesterday ask hannah and penina for as long as hannah wanted a child to stop the mockery of penina god said that is too small a reason to give you a child but the day she said you need a prophet let my womb this is not about mockery again she prayed once and a child came prayer and fasting in the presence of god purifies your motif why do you want to host the glory of god why do you want the power of god so you sit in front so your name is on a poster so partners can come and give you millions and billions god is not a member of a political party he cannot be manipulated he's the monarch of the universe there is no good father who gives an unprepared son a car or keys to a safe an heir for as long as he's a child the bible says that he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all are we learning something now we need to humble ourselves and ask the lord to prune us it is not that miracle working power cannot come to you it is not that fame and influence cannot come these things were destined already in christ but not this version of you is a version of you that must die I told God anything at all anything at all that sustains the power to take your place in my life may it never come what do I need it for men and women of God please hear me as vast as we are seated here looking at me the Lord is exposing our tendencies to us and saying reverend if you carry the level of glory you are praying for it may not be safe for you now so I need that pruning he that the father loves he chastens the chastening of God is proof of his love a responsible parent will chasten his child so that he will bear fruit the Lord told me something years ago and he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you If you let men see me they said Lord I have no business building a name for myself your name is greater than mine and you've given me already as an inheritance what other name will be greater I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you the truth till today until tomorrow I have no agenda to build a name for myself a reputation uh -uh. no no please take it high for me Yeshua Hamashia Komina nakane Komina nakane Yesu 
Komi na na kane, Komi na na kane, Yeshua Hamashiach. Komi na na kane. Listen, you want increase in ministry? Hand over that ministry to God. Your reputation will kill you if you put it before ministry. Carry the car, carry your reputation. Put it in an alabaster box and bring it before him. Everything. Lord, this competitive spirit, put it in the alabaster box. This desire for fame, put it in the alabaster box. This tendency, put it in the alabaster box. And when you get to his feet, don't pour it, break it. Break it there. And God says, you carried your fame and your reputation and you brought it to my feet so you could go this far let's go to the next level of grace when your motif is purified in the place of prayer you can come and stand before God's people and you will not manipulate and deceive them you see if you have the courage to manipulate and deceive God's people is it tells you how much you are alive in yourself that you know the prophecy you are giving is a lie that you know that what you are saying is not god that said it and you have the conscience to stand and actually do it yeshua hamashiach komi nanakane yeshua hamashiach everything take the ministry oh god i'm tired of the burden of this ministry killing me take every it says my yoke is easy the one you are carrying is not him that gave you he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light so if ministry is killing you someone put that burden on you We are going to have spend five minutes with God. Everyone just crying your heart before your maker. You're saying, Lord, I truly desire to see the manifestation of this glory in my life. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me all of me you have my everything listen many years ago when kaduna in a conference like this and that's how this song came it was a time of consecration and repentance and opening our hearts before him and this song came listen i want you to cast your golden crown forget that you are mog leave the issue of man of god we respect and we honor your pedigree but in the next five minutes i'd like you to find a corner and we're going to cry before the lord search my heart i desire to be mightily used by you in jalingo in taraba state father some of you are like the prodigal son come to your father in sincerity and repentance how many hired servants he said as my father and i am here feeding with the swine he said i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your slaves but as the father saw him from a distance he embraced him and changed his robe go ahead and pray Please pray. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours. It's yours. Whatever you want from me, whatever you. 
I surrender. Go ahead. Lay down the pride. Lay down everything. Whatever you ask of me. Whatever you ask of me. I surrender. Whatever you ask of me. Please pray. Pray. Something is happening to you. In this prayer, you will encounter the grace and the mantle for your ministry. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords your glorious majesty ya bone na kao suchada ne na kao sir king salama sir king aljan Crucify my flesh before Sujada Ne Nakao Sir King Salama Sir King Aljana Ya bone na kao Sujada ne na kao Acknowledge him in all your ways Hallelujah Just one minute. We 
are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you'll do what you do. We need a move over Chalingo. We need a move. This is a move. We need a move. Father, we come to you with hearts broken, hearts repentant, conscious of your love. We ask for your mercy and we ask for your grace. We ask for your grace. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. For some of you, you need to return. No mountain you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Ah. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming out to me. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so kind to me. Listen. Listen, in the name of Jesus, 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 I know some of you are crying, but listen to me. This is the threshing floor of Naboth. There is a relationship between death and glory. It is more than preaching sermons. It is more than crusades. It is more than laying hands on the sick. It's a testament of genuine love. Prayer now becomes the platform that changes you. You evolve to that level that can host the grace for nations. The anointing for territories. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And he says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He says, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and even despised the shame. We have to round up. Please listen to me. In the name of Jesus. As you go back home and all through the remaining part of this conference, please go back again and renew your passion for the spirit of prayer and supplication. Any attack on your prayer life, any attack on fasting, it's an attack on the glory of God upon your life. God is not a herbalist. No. I've taken our time and we'll soon be wrong. We desire to see the fire of revival sweep from city to city in Jalingo. That upon every street, every church, every denomination, every anglican communion fire burns upon the altar then your political system will begin to come under the influence of that fire then your economic system begins to come under the influence of that fire 
then every other aspect comes under the influence of that fire. This is how territories are changed. You don't change territories by changing territories. You change territories by changing yourself. When you are changed, the territory will look like you. The focus is not them. The focus is us. When we are changed, the territory must change. That's what Jesus did. He changed 12 men and the transformed 12 men, now the apostles of the Lamb, alongside others that made the 120 set the world on fire. It was John Wesley that said, set yourself on fire and the whole world will come to watch you burn. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for bringing your word, helping us to understand that your patterns forerun your glory. You have helped us and you have shown us as it was in the tabernacle of Moses that your glory came and rested upon the people, men and women, because your patterns were kept. We confess, O oh God, that we have been careless in complying with your divine patterns. You left us your word. You left us the Holy Spirit. You left us teaching priests to help us. But we have not been attentive. Yet scripture says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. It says, do not let them depart from you. They are life, he says, to those who find them and even health to their flesh. And so, Father, we come with hearts broken and hearts repentant. Show us your ways afresh. Spirit of the living God, we honor your ministry in our lives. You were sent by Jesus, representing the presence of the Father in us and to us and with us, helping us to conform in experience to the image of the Christ. And we pray that for many of us, we're interested in that school of the Spirit again. Start afresh with us. Build in us divine patterns, patterns that will help us host several levels and dimensions of the glory of God and we decree and declare that through our lives and in our lives and from our lives and by our lives Jesus will ever remain glorified lifted in our churches in our territories let this be so in Jesus name I pray amen and amen God bless you Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again.